Hi everyone, welcome to part two of uh, the Q&A. So in this video, we're going to talk more about business. So I compiled your questions and um, yeah, so let's get into it. What are the challenges that you face as a woman in business in Zimbabwe? How did you overcome the challenges and kept going? So I think the biggest challenge that I can think of right now is that when you are trying to do business in Zimbabwe or network with people of the opposite sex, they tend to hit on you a lot. And this happens to a lot of women in Zimbabwe. So um, the way to overcome that for me was just to remain focused on the end goal and um, not allow anyone to take that away from me. So I knew what I wanted to do. I knew the end goal, so I didn't allow any distractions. I mean, people will talk. That that was another thing. People will talk um, and create all these rumors. But then as long as you keep moving forward and stick to your goal, stick to your aim, that's all that matters at the end of the day because people will realize the truth after the math. So um, I guess not to get distracted by, the, by, by rumors and not to get distracted by... People offering you all these bells and whistles and all of this stuff. Because When did you know you wanted to be self-employed and what have been the challenges so far? I think I've wanted to be self-employed for a very long time, even before I moved to Zimbabwe. Even when I was in the UK, I would always have a side hustle going on of some sort. Um, so for me, I think it was one of those things that... I would be working, but in my head, I'd be like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I'd rather be doing that. I would stay up late hours researching and doing a lot of things and so forth. So for me, I think it's it's always been a thing. But then at that time, earlier on, I didn't know what exactly I wanted to do. Um, yeah, I only discovered I wanted to do what I wanted to do probably two or three years ago. And then even just to take the leap of actually doing what... I wanted to do was also quite hard so um, yeah but then another thing that I, I, I always share when I have um, speaking engagements is that I don't believe that everyone should be an entrepreneur because this life is hard and it's not for everybody I feel like sometimes you are very good at what you do in in, in that small bubble that you know if you try and do a whole business it can overwhelm you and I feel like it's important to know that it's okay to be very good at what you do and to support someone else's dream the people shouldn't take that away from people I don't think that everyone should be an entrepreneur it's just something that I've always wanted to do but even as an entrepreneur right now the things that I know that I can't do so I outsource a lot of things like I don't think that you know you should feel pressured in starting your own business I don't think you should feel pressured to be like, oh, well, yeah, I'm a boss and all of these things. I don't necessarily think that it's for everybody and you don't want to be worn out and all of these things if you're not built for it. Not everyone should be a leader um, and not everyone should, you know, should be an influencer. Not everyone should, you know, so I feel like you just need to figure that out first if being an entrepreneur is something that you want to do or is it something that society said that you should be doing but when you necessarily don't want to do that you're happy to just go to work do what you're supposed to do contribute build whatever um, that you're in and go home and get your check at the end of the month I feel like if if that's what you feel comfortable with then by all means don't feel pressure to do what everybody else thinks you need to be doing how do you stay motivated to continue and be 100% when it comes to running your business and you have, uh, oh, and have you got any marketing advice? Well, the way I say motivated is that I need to pay bills at the end of the year, at the end of the month. So, um, I know that, you know, the, you know, that's another thing about entrepreneurship. You eat what you kill at the end of the day and you eat less. That's another thing. So as much as you eat what you kill, you are the one that eats less as well. So um, that's what keeps me motivated. And yeah, 
I, j I think because my vision is a certain way until I've, I, I get to the first goal of the vision, then I have to keep pushing. Yeah. I do procrastinate a lot, unfortunately, and I'm trying to not do that. But as soon as I hit go, I'm like, I'm on it. So I guess it, it, it works out. But then um, with the direction that we're going right now, I can't afford to be procrastinating anymore. So yeah, we'll see how that works out. Um, any marketing advice? Whew, okay, I think it depends where you want to market. So if you're going to talk about um, digital marketing, where I'm pretty strong at. So Danaka pretty much launched, grew, and so forth um, from Instagram and Facebook. So the advice I would give if you're going to be on the on on social media and so forth is have a message. For whatever that you're trying to market you need to be coherent on your instagram to your facebook to your website um and that should also marry onto your offline marketing as well so if you have a presence online and everyone is seeing all these all this glam and all of this thing that's going on with your brand or your business um they should be able to relate to that offline as well i feel like a lot of the time when people are marketing on social media, it then doesn't translate off social media. So when you go offline, it's like, okay, your packaging is not as good or um, your delivery is not as good, your customer service is not as good and all of these other things that make up a business and make up a brand, I feel like people fall short on that. So I guess another advice, the second advice I would give is that you should be able to marry whatever is perceived online with whatever that you are also providing offline because that's how people end up going back and coming back so um yeah so make sure the two are um in sync Jen, how and where did you find information on how to start a business um well first of all you need to register your business um yeah so the information is around if you go to the right offices they'll be able to help you or if you speak to certain people, they'll be able to help you. So for my business, most of my friends are in business. So I, I managed to ask them. And then uh, my friend's brother is an accountant and he opens up um, or he registers business and Zim and so forth. So he did that for me. And then he referred his friend who's an accountant to do my books and so forth. So I guess it just depends who you know and what you're trying to do. Because sometimes you don't necessarily have to register your business from the get-go because maybe you're still testing the market and so forth and so forth. What's your success story? How did you get your business to succeed? Um, I don't, to be honest, I think I'm still on this journey. I think, or I know for a fact that I'm still on this journey. I have a lot to learn and I have a long way to go. We've only been in business for a year. Um, so I guess my success so far is just the fact that I can survive right now and um, people still want the products. So I think that's the biggest success for me that the product has been accepted by a lot of women and the product works for a lot of the women. Maybe 95 to 99% of the women that have used our products have seen a significant change. The fact that people like the brand is the successful thing for me. How did you get your business to succeed? Yeah, there were a lot of things that I knew that needed to happen for it and the fact that I formulate the products myself and manufacture them and do all of that stuff, I knew what's going in the product and the result that I wanted in the end. So I guess that helped in, in, in its entirety. Um, and then how did I get it successful? I guess to add on to that answer is that I Zimbabwe is, is, is a small country and I feel that if you do the right thing, people will embrace you, whatever industry that you're in. So I feel like if you deliver um, correctly and you deliver a good brand, a good product, a good business, a good service, people will come back. People will migrate back to you. So that goes for any any type of business. So, yeah. <laughs> do you plan to have any other initiatives to promote African beauty like Ndanaka for body, Ndanaka hair? Um, I signed up for your booklets that found I found that I found very informative. We need more of those. Okay, so Danaka, I guess the flag products were the facial products. Um, but if you don't know, we do have products for hair. 
predominantly natural hair. Um, as you can see with my hair, my hair is natural and I use Danaka products and Cantu products because we haven't developed more products than the two products that we have currently. Um, so we do have Danaka hair. We've got the hair mist and we have the hair butter and we'll be expanding that soon. Um, we do have Danaka body. Currently we only have, we only have a body butter. But we'll be expanding on that as well this year. I guess people know Danaka because of the skincare products. But we have body care and we do have hair care. And we have a lot more things that we'll be adding on to the brand as the years go by. So we're on it, girl. We're on it. <laughs> What's the most challenging aspect of doing business in Zimbabwe? And how have you managed to overcome that challenge? So I guess the biggest challenge for me has been the cash situation. Um, and that challenge was that the, okay, for, for those people who don't know, Zimbabwe was in this whole situation last year where we didn't have hard currency because we're using the U S dollars. So we can't print U S dollars because it's not a currency and the USA doesn't print U S dollars saying that they're going to send it to Zimbabwe either. So what happened was that we had a hard cash crisis and um, people started trading on the black market because the bank was not issuing any hard currency. So if you were traveling, you couldn't just go in and withdraw money and then change it. You pretty much couldn't do that. So what ended up happening was that people started selling US dollars on the black market. So if you have a hundred dollars, it's all over 10%. So you'd pay 110%, uh, $110 into someone's account and then they would then um, give you a hundred dollars um, hard currency and then by the I think it was possibly August September October around that time and the rate was now most was the rate was now at 85% um, before the whole new Zimbabwe situation came up so that meant that for every $100, you needed to pay $85 on top of that to get $100 in hard cash. So not only did you have to do that, and then you had to find someone to make the transfer in whichever country that you're purchasing from or importing from, um, if they have money in that country to make that purchase for you. So for example, if I needed some ingredients from Namibia, I would have to find someone with a Namibian account um, who had money in, in that account um who can then actually first of all i'll need to find the us dollars and then i'll have to find someone with an, a namibian um account to then pay my suppliers in namibia for the product to then come to zimbabwe so you see so that's a lot of money that you have to keep paying in order for you to create a product in zimbabwe because we manufacture locally Danaka is not a brand where we buy a finished product and we rebrand it. We literally, re okay, I literally <laughs> research the product, um, sorry, research the ingredients, then look for the for where we have suppliers, whether locally or internationally, and then you have to bring the product into Zimbabwe, right? And then, you know, you start doing everything else that you need to do to create the product. So... That's a lot of money, you know, that's a lot of money. So for us, we didn't want to keep increasing the price to inconvenience our customers because we understood what the situation was. So that was the biggest challenge for me last year. Um, now the rate is at 45% and it fluctuates between 45 and 55, 50 and so forth. So it's still quite high and you have to factor in that change into your products or services, right? So the way to overcome that was that I had to use my British account to pay for stuff um, so that I wouldn't need to increase the price const constantly. Or I would find someone in Zimbabwe that needed money. Um, yeah, and then, so which is usually like my mom's friends or someone who need money in Zimbabwe for their relatives and then they deposit that money into my British account and then I make the payments and then the stuff comes to me. So that's that's probably the best way I've 
manage to overcome the situation but that's not very consistent either so we still have to pay sometimes a 45 percent um in order for us to acquire some of our ingredients or packaging and so forth so that's how that was a challenge and that's how i've managed to overcome it to some extent how do you network to grow your business i'm particularly shy and find it a bit hard to meet new people so for um if you're planning on networking i feel like you need to know the purpose and the reason for networking. Um, so I used to be shy because I then realized after that, I'm probably shy because I don't really have much to offer. I don't know what I'm doing. If someone has to engage in a conversation with me, I don't know what I'm doing. So I get shy because not even shy at that point. I think I was like embarrassed. Like, okay, I'm in this room full of all these influential people or people who are about their business or about their career and all this stuff. And there I am. And I'm like, I have no idea what I want to do or what I'm doing. So yeah. I guess the best thing to start off with if you're shy is really to narrow down what it is that um, you do and make it easy for you to explain to people um, because you never know who in your network can be your next client. What advice would you give an upcoming entrepreneur? Okay, so to add, to continue from my last point, if you're an upcoming entrepreneur, know that it takes time. Honestly, it takes a long time to get to a certain level where you're comfortable. Um, I'm still not even at that level yet. So um, you just have to prepare for a good year before you decide to leave your job. If you're, if you're in a full-time job. But if you're not in a full-time job and you're an entrepreneur, I think that you need to do a lot of collaborations. You can't do things on your own, especially if you're starting, um, because it will drain you. It will take so much of you. So if you if you can figure out a way of you know trading your skills for another skill from somebody else that you need for your business to grow, then you have to figure it out. Um, so... Yeah, and then another advice is that you need to learn to delegate. And I know this is shared a lot of the time, but you don't realize that until you're in it, um, that you need to delegate. Even when I hired some people, I was still doing the work and I, I'm still trying to learn to delegate because other areas of my business then suffer because I'm literally worn out and I'm just too tired to do a lot of things. So I think that's the best advice I would give someone that if you're still employed, start your hustle. First, while you're still employed because you still need that money to also um, feed into your business. Second of all, if you're not employed and you're in the Zim situation and you're trying to figure out, collaborate. I think collaboration is very important. Um, and another thing, I guess, to add on to that list of advices is that learn to ask. Learn to ask and learn to be humble. You don't know everything, especially if you're just starting out. You don't know everything and the world does not owe you anything either like you may be thinking that well you should give me your money because i'm going to do a b c and d but listen people don't owe you their money because it's their hard-earned money um people don't need to you know work with you people don't need to use your services people don't need to use your products they don't need to do that so at the end of the day you just have to make sure that you deliver a quality service a quality product and have a quality business for people to actually want to work with you or to use your services or your product. So, um, yeah. And another thing is that your friends, and I've learned this, your friends and your family are not your customers. And I was, But let me tell you, I have friends that I've known for years, even prior to starting Danako moving back to Zimbabwe, that have not even called me to say congratulations, Okay. They've never called me to use the product or to say, you know what, I'm just trying your product. If I don't like it, I don't like it. But you know what, I'm supporting you and so forth. And at the end of the day, like what I said before, they don't owe you anything. They don't need to buy into your business. So that's okay. And you just have to keep moving on because those are not predominantly your customers. So don't, cut, don't start a business or be an entrepreneur trying to sell to your friends or your family because you'll be very disappointed um yeah trust me you'll be very disappointed and you just have to keep it moving like i said i have people that i consider my friends who've never asked me how my business is who've never asked me 
um, you know, how everything is going, who've never used the product, who've never used, said congratulations if I met, if I've, if I've done something that's pretty big, you know, or whatever, or if I've, if I'm now retailing in a new store, they've never said congratulations, they've never, you know, just a lot of things that they haven't done that you would think your friends should do, but then that shouldn't stop you from continuing with the hustle. So thank you guys so much for your questions. I hope I answered everyone's question and I hope I made sense. Um, if you still do have questions, I will have another Q and A. Um, so let me know what you would like to know and um, I'll do another video for that. But thank you so much for joining me once again. Make sure that you like and subscribe to this video and my channel. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.